Good day, everyone. This is the day the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. We are so excited that you decided to join with us today, and we hope that you are truly blessed by the word that will go forth that I know that God has for us. And so we're going to get right into it. And the, the scripture is 1 Corinthians 3, 10 through 11. 1 Corinthians 3, 10 through 11. And that reads as follows. According to the grace of God given to me, like a skilled master builder, I laid a foundation, and someone else is building upon it. Let each one take care how he builds upon it. For no one can lay a foundation other than that which is laid, which is Jesus Christ. My topic today, for just a few short moments, is how strong is your foundation? How strong is your foundation? When building a structure of any sort, a strong foundation is important. What is a foundation? Well, let's look at some of the definitions. One is definition is one being the natural or prepared ground or base in, of which uh, a structure rests upon. Another is the lowest division of a building or wall, usually of masonry or partly or wholly below the surface or ground. And the other definition here is the basis or groundwork of anything. I want to come back to that one. So the foundation is the base in which is responsible for holding everything up. So if it's responsible for holding everything up, if the foundation is shaky, everything else will be shaky. And we'll come back to that as well. But if you go to a place where earthquakes are known to occur, there are buildings there that have stood the test, meaning they have made it through many earthquakes and it's because of the strong foundation and what the foundation was made up of. And then there are buildings there that are no longer there, that were there, that are no longer there because of the weak foundations that they had. And when the earthquakes came, they fell. Now, many people have died when earthquakes have occurred. But understand, earthquakes do not kill people. It is the buildings that kill people. So nowadays, buildings are made up with the mindset of preparing for these earthquakes. Therefore, they must do what needs to be done to the foundation to be able to withstand earthquakes when they come. So again, they prepare. Now, why do they prepare the foundation? Because let me go back. When the foundation is shaky, everything else is shaky as the building is only as strong and solid as the foundation. Why? Because the foundation is the basis. It is the groundwork. And if you're going to build something, you want that foundation to be strong. And so here in the scripture where we're at, Paul was writing about what that foundation must look like and must be in our lives and what our foundation must be made up of and nothing less. And I want to talk about it. But let's look at the story here as we're just dealing with verse 10 to 11. Paul here wrote to the church uh, at Corinth to address some of the struggles it was having uh, in this letter. And, and the church was being uh, undermined by uh, immorality and immaturity and their faith was being tried. So Paul wrote this letter to mend their division and answer their questions. He also called them to be committed to Christ. And so he talks about uh, unity, he talks about, uh, you know, it moves to immaturity and he deals with the division. And here it brings us to chapter three. And in the beginning of this chapter here, Paul was discussing how the people People should not get caught up in those who are preaching or teaching the gospel as it is not about them, but rather God. The people here were favoring certain teachers and Paul was telling them that it's not about them and that this thinking and this behavior is adding to the division in their church. And he was reiterating that the focus must be on God. It must be on Christ. So verse 9 of this chapter brings us to our scriptures of focus today. And so verse 9 says, he, Paul says, he says, For we are God's fellow workers. You are God's field, God's building. So let's look at verse 10. Verse 10 says, and Paul says, he said, According to the grace of God given to me, like a skilled master builder, I laid a foundation and someone else is building upon it. Let each one take care how he builds upon it. So in the beginning part of this verse, Paul notes, he says this, according to the grace God given to me, like a skilled master builder, I laid a foundation. He uses the word grace. Let me just stop there for one second. Paul knew that his position, 
that what he was doing, that the provisions that were made, the paths that were set out were only because of the grace of God, was only because God gave to him what he did not deserve. And that is important for us to understand every day in our life. The only reason why we're able to do what we do, go where we go, uh, is because of the grace of God. It is only because God provided a way for us. And we must understand that God did not have to. But because of his grace, because he loves you so much, he did in spite of. He allowed things in spite of. You know, sometimes we get so caught up in ourselves thinking that the good in our lives happened because we did something. No, it was only because of God's grace, because we don't deserve anything with the way we mess up every day. But that grace, which is God, the things that God gives us that we don't deserve, that's what he provides for us every single day. Every day we wake up, that's grace. You see, Paul under Paul knew and understood, listen, that God did not have to choose him. You know, Paul was out there, he was arresting Christians and doing all this, but God chose him. He showed that grace upon his life. God didn't have to save him. That's the same thing with us. God didn't have to choose us. God didn't have to save us. God didn't have to stop this from happening or that from happening. God didn't have to pick you up. God didn't have to, you know, uh, 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 have you survive from certain things. God didn't have to do that. It was nothing but the grace of God. So let me move on. So Paul continues. He says, because of the grace that was given to me, like a skilled master builder, I laid a foundation. Paul stated like a skilled master builder. He was stating that he laid a foundation that it like that is equivalent to a skilled master builder when they would build a building. A skilled master building would only use the best and he would be sure that the foundation will not be faulty. So Paul says, this is how I laid it, with only the best foundation. And in case you did not know, that was Jesus. Paul preached Jesus. Paul preached the resurrection. This was the foundation. So in verse 11, look what Paul states. He says, for no one can lay a foundation other than which is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Paul was saying here, look, there is no other foundation other than Jesus. All other foundations will be faulty, and Jesus was the only foundation to build upon. Well, why? Why is Jesus the only foundation to build upon? Well, for one thing, the foundation of Jesus is able to withstand. If I take you back to the intro of this section, we talked about how the earthquakes would come and knock those buildings down that did not have a strong foundation. Therefore, those who were building would build with a strong foundation to be able to withstand the earthquakes. In this life we live, and I'm sure all of us can attest to this, the earthquakes of life will come. Storms will arise. Challenges will face us. Trials will be before us. And the foundation of Jesus is the only foundation that can withstand all that comes our way. You know, this is why, number one, our church must be built on Jesus. We live in a world that is trying to destroy the church, that is trying to destroy our faith, that is trying to cause confusion within the church. But if our foundation is Jesus, no matter what comes our way, our church will be able to stand. This is why we as individuals must be built on Jesus. Jesus stated in his life, we will have tribulation. Trouble will come looking for us. We will have bad days. We will get discouraged at times. But if Jesus is my foundation, although I may get discouraged and have bad days come, my foundation in Jesus reminds me that my good days outweigh my bad days and I am able to withstand. Marriages must be built on Jesus. You know, attacks come from all over trying to destroy marriages and family. Couples will argue, they'll have their differences. They will. But if the marriage is built on Jesus, they are able to withstand those attacks. Well, why else must we have the foundation of Jesus? Well, because Jesus is real. Jesus is true. John 4, 14 and 6 says this. It says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. So we want to follow the truth. We want to follow what, uh, what is real. You know, we want a true 
foundation. John 8 and 32 says, and you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. So the truth is able to hold us up and set us free from the earthquakes of life. And you know, when something is true, when something is real, it's dependable. It's reliable. You can count on it. It will always be there. Isn't that describing the goodness of the Lord? Isn't that describing how he has never left us or forsook us when, when, uh, when things have and, 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 and people still do? I mean, there is so much false in this world. However, it is relieving to know that Jesus is real and we can put our trust in him. We can put our faith in him and he will always uphold us. I don't know about you, but as I look over at the things trying to destroy me, this gives me hope in knowing that because of my foundation is in Jesus, I can get over and I can withstand. So if our foundation is true, then that means that our foundation is buildable. We are able to build on it. Why? Because it is secure. The reason why certain churches fail is because the foundation is not Jesus. The foundation cannot be the pastor. The foundation cannot be tradition. The foundation cannot be the choir. The foundation cannot be anything else except the one who resurrected and sits on the right hand of the Father of God, and that is Jesus. Anything else will make the church fall. The reason why marriages fall is because the foundation is not Jesus. If marriages do not have the foundation that is built on Jesus, how can two people properly love one another as the word directs us to do? And if love is, is the basis that carries a relationship, and love is the basis that carries a relationship, you know? Because if I don't love you, I won't tolerate you. If I don't love you, I won't treat you right. If I don't love you, then when things are no longer for the better, but yet for the worse, we won't make it through. Having Jesus as a foundation will bring married couples through when nothing else can. So when my foundation is Jesus, my foundation is strong and I am able to build. You see, Paul knew that others were going to come and build on what he laid. He understood, uh, but the only, he understood the only way for them to build is that the foundation had to be true. It had to be sturdy. It had to be strong. It had to be Jesus and nothing else. So yes, many of us have the foundation of Jesus in our lives, which means that we're saved. And, and when we're saved, no one can take that away from us. But watch this here. Although we may be saved and have that foundation of Jesus, too many of us are trying to build other things in our life without Jesus being the foundation. Let's look at relationships. Can I, let me talk to uh, some of the singles out there. And this is hard to swallow, but I'm gonna keep it real because that's what I do. How can I be in a, in a successful relationship with someone who does not love God. If I'm in a relationship with someone who does not love God and God teaches how to love, then how can I expect this person to love me how I should be loved? And because they do not love God, that means nothing in their life is on the foundation of Jesus. And that means our relationship will not be on the foundation of Jesus. And if it's not on the foundation of Jesus, then it's on something else. And it will not be able to withstand the earthquakes of a relationship. And we wonder why we fall into this realm of failing relationships. Something else. Too many of us are setting other endeavors on another foundation other than Jesus. What I mean is that you're, you're, you're out there uh, doing something that you wanted to do. Never prayed about it. Never asked God to bless it. You just went ahead and laid your own foundation. And when you lay your own foundation... It's not on Jesus, which means that it's on something else. And we wonder why things are not sturdy. And then, you know, too many of us lay our, 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 our foundation on something else just in our daily walk. Which means we get up, uh, we move, we go, we leave without praying, without seeking, without asking God to bless and direct our daily walk just in a normal day. No wonder why many of us, our days are rocky and shaky because we not we did not have laid that foundation of Jesus when we rose that morning. So my question to you is, is what do the foundations in your life look like? You know, are they sturdy? You know, or, you know, the, the, those areas where we're frustrated and nothing going on, well, did you lay the proper 
foundation? You know, that's the question. You know, Jesus reminds us in Luke 6, verses 47 through 49, this is what Jesus said. He said, everyone who comes to me and hears my word and does them, I will show you what he's like. So he said, listen, everyone who comes to me, listen to my word and does them, let me show you what it's like. And so in verse 48, in verse 48 of this, he says, he's like a man building a house who dug deep and laid a foundation on a rock. And when the flood arose, the stream broke against that house and could not shake it because it had been well built. Jesus said, listen, those who hear my words, do what the word says. It's like their foundation is on the rock and it's strong. And when these things come, it will not knock them over. Why? Because the foundation is strong. This is why we must follow the word and do and apply the word of God. But then in verse 9, he says, but the one who hears and does not do them is like a man who built a house on the ground without a foundation. And when the steam broke against it, it immediately fell, and the ruin of that house was great. Which Jesus says, listen, those who don't follow the word of God, don't listen, don't apply, do not have a strong foundation. And when those things come, those storms arise, boom, we're immediately knocked over. You know, our foundation must be Jesus in all facets of our life. All. And yes, earthquakes, trials, storms will come. But when Jesus is our foundation, we can understand what 2 Corinthians 4, 8 through 9 says. That says, yeah, you know, we're afflicted in every way, but not crushed. Why? Because my foundation is in Jesus. We're perplexed, but not driven to despair. Why? Because my foundation is in Jesus. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Why? Because my foundation is in Jesus. Struck down, but not destroyed. Because my foundation is is in Jesus. It is able to withstand. It is strong. I'm going to end on this. For some of us who have fell down, if you are under the sound of my voice right now, you still have a chance to rebuild. And the only way to rebuild and have success and to be able to withstand the earthquakes of life is to rebuild with Jesus as the foundation. And I encourage you right now, if you have fallen, Pick yourself up. But first, before you stand, get on your knees. Pray. Get up and build that foundation on Jesus. And watch God. God bless you. Amen. We hope that you are blessed by the word and as we talked about the foundations of our life and how important it is to have those foundations in every facet of our lives. And right now, we just want to offer the opportunity for someone to give their life to Christ. You know, God offers a free gift, which is his son, Jesus. Uh, so that our sins can be saved, uh, forgiven, and so that we can have eternal life. We'll be able to go see God. There is no other way. The only way is through Jesus. And if you would like to give your life to him, accept him in your heart, we want to offer that opportunity to do so now. And if you have been touched and you want to give your life to Christ, all you have to do is repeat after me. I just encourage you, let's close our eyes and repeat after me and say, Father, I admit that I have sinned and come short of the glory of God. I believe that Jesus died on a cross for my sins. And I'm confessing him as my Lord and Savior right now. Amen. If you have done that, we welcome you to the kingdom of God. We encourage you to get to a Bible-believing and Bible-teaching church. Uh, and we also encourage you to continue to follow us and continue to be with us. Uh, we, we, we enjoy uh, that, that you are, are watching us and following us. And if you would like to see this sermon live, you can go to our website at www.mcbcmh.org. Uh, click on live stream every Sunday at 11 a.m. And you'll be able to see this sermon live. Uh, so we hope that you will be able to join us. God bless you and have a wonderful day.